We'll practice Garudasana. So start in Tadasana, feet together, engaged legs, long spine. And lift the arms up and overhead. And then bend your knees and take your hips back and down to start in an Utkatasana prep position. And then wrap your arms so that your right arm comes underneath the left and find Garuda arms. And then lift the right thigh up and cross your right thigh high up over the left thigh. So your arms and legs are wrapped up tightly. Squeeze the arms and legs together. Sit your pelvis back and down. Lift the low belly. Imagine the outer hips gathering together as much as your knees squeeze together. Reach your forearms forwards and lift the whole rib cage as you sink the pelvis down more. And then release the arms and the legs and stand in Tadasana. Let the arms float up to the sides. And then again, inhale, lift the arms up overhead and exhale, lower the outer hips down, lower the inner thighs down into a chair position. Swing the left arm under the right and swing the left thigh over the right thigh, crossing high on the thighs. Wrap up the arms and wrap up the legs and squeeze a little tighter. Sit your pelvis back and down, deepen your groins down and lift the rib cage, connect the low belly to the spine and stretch your forearms forward. Balance your head right over your tail, bending the knees even more. And then release and come out of the pose, standing in Tadasana. And now grab your strap and we'll practice Utkatasana. So take your feet so they're hip distance apart and lift the strap up overhead hands are shoulder distance apart and then exhale and lower your hips back and down keeping the arms reaching back and keeping the chest lifted squeeze your outer hips together and take them further down let your thighs and knees be parallel and lift the bottom front ribs up towards the ceiling and keep the wings of the kidneys open so keep the lower back ribs broad and keep breath there. Let your arms reach back, let your shoulder blades hug forward, and then inhale and straighten the legs and lift the arms higher, lengthening the armpits. Strong legs as you exhale and lower the strap down. Now we'll practice Virabhadrasana 2 or Warrior 2. Start in Tadasana. Hands on hips and step your feet wide so the feet are parallel and then even bring your toes a little further in so heels are wider than toes and stand tall. And then externally rotate the whole right leg and turn your left toes in even more. Stretch your arms out to the sides, widen through the collarbones and exhale as you bend the right knee so the right knee comes directly over the right heel. Be strong in the back leg and let the right butt cheek drop down and under you as the right knee opens more to the right. Lift the low belly, spread from the collarbones to the thumbs and gather from the pinky fingers towards the shoulder blades. It's okay if that back hip is coming forward slightly so your hips do not have to be flat open laterally. Pull the left thigh back right buttock releasing down and then inhale and straighten the front leg and we'll switch sides so hands on hips while you externally rotate the left leg turn the right toes in even more and then ascend the spine from bottom to top as you stretch the arms and exhale bend your left knee directly over the left heel lift the low belly straighten the back leg it's okay if that back hip is coming forward slightly, so your hips do not have to be flat open laterally. There should be a feeling of the right hip coming forward a little and then you release the left butt cheek down and firm the center of the left buttock forward towards the groin. Keeping the left knee open, keeping the back leg strong and extended. Be earthy in your legs. And then inhale to straighten the front leg 
come to parallel feet, hands on hips, and step your feet together. Now lay down on your belly for Shalavasana, and one at a time reach your legs back so that you set yourself up very long on the floor. Take your hands by your hips, forehead down, and then start to lift the shoulders up towards the ceiling. Lift your legs, lift the wrists, reach your chest forward, reach your legs back, and pull the arms back as you stretch your spine forwards. Anchor your tailbone down, Lift the inner thighs, stretch the knees, open the toes, and lift those outer arms up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, release down, resting your head to one side. And then turn your head and rest the other cheek down on the ground. Release and relax the buttocks. And now for another version of Shalabhasana. So be on your belly, stretched out long. Lengthen your rib cage forward, lengthen your legs back, and then stretch your arms forwards. And once again, adjust your legs so that your legs are really reaching back and so the arms are reaching forward. So you should feel nice and long here, laid out on the ground, prone position, belly down. And now start to lift your right arm and left leg up. So stay grounded in that right leg, stay grounded in the left hand. Lift the chest up as well and get longer in that right arm and longer in that left leg. And then slowly lower down and switch sides. Now lifting the left arm up and the right leg up. Stay grounded in that right hand, stay grounded in the left leg and left top of foot, lifting the chest, lengthening the limbs here. And then exhale and release down. And again, lifting the right arm and the left leg. Anchor your tailbone down towards the sticky mat. Lengthen the right arm forward and the left leg back. Extended elbow, extended knee. And lower down. And again, lift the left arm and the right leg up. Reach the left arm forward and the right leg back. Lengthen the limbs. And exhale and come down. And now place your hands alongside your body, alongside the rib cage. Lengthen your legs back again for a Shalabhasana variation. Now interlace your fingers behind your back. Lift the arms, pull them back. Lift the legs, pull them back. Open the backs of the knees. Pull the arms and the legs back so much that your spine responds by lengthening forwards. Lift from underneath the collarbones. And get longer here rather than just lifting everything up. So even back down out of the pose 10% and get longer. And then exhale and release down and switch the interlace of the fingers, taking the other pointer finger on top. And then lift yourself up into Shalabhasana, getting longer as you lift the inner thighs. Keep the feet and toes open. Lift the outer shoulders and pull the elbows and the wrists and the fingers back as you stretch the anterior spine forwards, tailbone anchoring. And then exhale and come down to rest. Now we'll practice a shin twist. So start on hands and knees and bring your knees, shins, and ankles together. And then sit back on your heels. 
sitting tall. And we'll start by twisting to the left. So you can bring your right forearm to the floor directly in front of your left knee. Have your palm facing up. Press your right forearm down and then lift the left arm up to the ceiling. And think of twisting the belly open to the left. Spread wide across the chest, lengthen your spine and pull the outer left hip back and pull the outer right hip back as well and squeeze your outer hips towards each other to help you lengthen even more in the spine. Lift the left hand up to lift the left shoulder girdle up, press the right forearm down and then release the twist. And now press your left forearm down into the sticky mat, left palm up. The left elbow is directly in front of the right knee and lift the right arm up, lengthening the spine, opening the chest and pull the outer right hip back and pull the outer left hip back and squeeze your outer hips together and pull them both back. And then from that foundation, unfold the front of the spine, lengthening it forwards, headwards and lift the right arm and shoulder up even more, twisting even deeper. And then exhale and release down and come out of the pose. And now we'll practice a deep shin twist. Now take the right elbow to the outside of the left knee and the right forearm on the ground, palm facing up, and lift the left arm up to the ceiling. Use the pressure of the right forearm onto the mat to help you turn a little more, lengthen the spine, pull your hips back, lengthen the left elbow and reach the left fingertips up to the ceiling as you turn the belly and the rib cage and the left ribs open more. And then exhale down and come to the other side taking the left elbow to the outer right knee, forearm to the sticky mat, left palm up, and lift your right arm up. Turn the belly to the right, open the right ribs, lift the right arm to the ceiling, pull your hips back and pull the spine forward. Keep your breath open here as you deeply twist. And then exhale and lower your right arm down and come back to center. Now we'll practice what I call a pixie side bend, starting on shins. And then let your hips slide over to the left. And take a side bend over to the right. So the right hand will be down on the sticky mat. Left arm comes up and overhead. And play with ways to deepen the side bend, to lengthen and expand the left side ribs, the left waist. Don't be afraid of the contraction on the right side here. Let this be a true side bend. Right side contracting and left side lengthening. Let the hips be heavy and grounded here. Reach the right arm further up and over. Deep in the side bend, open the left ribs. And then come out of the pose and sit back on the heels, coming to center. And then slide your hips over to the right. And take a side bend over to the left. Let that left hand support you as the right arm comes up and overhead. And create a sense of lengthening a sense of expansion in the right side ribs and the right waist. Heavy grounded hips here. Open the right ribs, look up at the top hand. Stay present and engaged here as you deepen the side bend. And then inhale yourself up to center and slide your hips over to sit centered in Vrajrasana. 
Now we'll practice Gomukhasana legs. So stack up two folded blankets, as you see here. And then come onto your hands and knees with the blankets behind you. And cross your right knee in front of the left knee, as you see. And then you'll crawl yourself back so that the folded blankets are between the feet. And let yourself come to sit back so that your buttocks, your sitting bones, are supported by the blankets and your legs are in this very crossed position. And take a moment to adjust the flesh of your calf muscles and adjust the flesh of the buttocks so that you can sit right on the center of the sitting bones and so your legs are very deeply folded into each other. So you can have the heels quite close to the outer hips or you can move the heels a little further from the outer hips. Hands on the blanket behind you. Lengthen and lift the spine, shoulders back, elbows back. Let your thigh bones settle. And then change the position of the hands so the hands will rest on the top knee. Have straight elbows and lift from underneath the heart. The abdomen is receding back. And let the thigh bones and the knees be heavy and relaxed. And then start to come forward, taking your hands onto the floor and walk those hands even more forward as you find a gentle forward bend here. So let there be a gentle curve in the spine, something like a child's pose back. Think of pulling the right femur back towards the hip socket and think of firming the outer hips towards each other. Let the upper buttocks release down towards the blankets behind you. And breathe into the sensation here. Connect your femurs back into the hip sockets. Smooth breathing. Be the witness here. Observe yourself in this posture. Observe yourself responding to the sensations. Observe yourself breathing. And then start to walk your hands back to let yourself back up, hands resting on the top knee. Come all the way upright in your spine, head over tail. And then come forward onto hands and knees again and we'll switch sides. So now take the left knee in front of the right knee, crossing the shins and back your hips up so that your hips will come down onto the blankets. And take a moment here to adjust the flesh of your buttocks, to adjust the flesh of the calves. And sit tall on the center of your sitting bones. Hands on the blankets behind you. Lengthen the sides of your waist all the way up into the armpits so those side ribs are lifting and the heads of the humerus bones go back. So there comes a natural lift from under the heart, from under the collarbones. Pubic bone is descending, groins deep and descending. And let your hands rest on the top knee here as you invite the femurs to get grounded, the knees to be heavy and relaxed, spine is tall and natural. And then pull the left femur back towards the hip socket and gather your outer hips in towards the midline as you walk your hands forward to find the forward bend here. 
gentle, natural curve of the spine as the belly recedes, as the upper buttocks releases down, as you gently lengthen the trunk forward, head is relaxed. You can stay active with the femur bones, gathering the femur bones back towards the hip sockets and gathering the outer hips in. Breathe into the sensations here, observing each moment, not at all placing judgment on the situation. Stay present here and breathe into the sensations that arise. And now start to walk your hands back so that you can sit up tall. Hands stack on the top knee again. Steady, smooth breath here. Lifting and opening through the back of the throat. Outer hips are grounded. And then come forward onto hands and knees to come out of the pose. Now we'll practice Janu Shirshasana, so have a blanket folded that you can sit on. And sit your buttocks down onto the blanket and stretch your legs out in front of you. And pull the flesh of the buttocks back so that you can sit up tall on the center of your sitting bones. Fingertips down, shoulders back. And then bend the left knee out to the side so the left sole of your foot comes very close to the right inner thigh. And use your fingertips on the floor to help you point the midline of your torso directly over the midline of your right leg. And then continue that action to twist fully to the right. So the left hand is on the right knee, right hand is on the blanket twisting to the right for a moment and then start to come forward and grab onto the outer right foot with your left hand. The right fingertips are on the floor to support you and start to lengthen your rib cage forward, lengthening the front ribs as much as the back ribs towards the right foot. Relax and release the left buttock back and down. Think of the whole belly sliding over to the right so that the midline of your belly comes directly over the midline of the right thigh, and then lengthen your belly forward even more. Pull the right thigh bone back towards the hip socket. Ground the right thigh bone down. So the deep low belly slides to the right, and then lengthen both sides of your rib cage straight forward, directly towards the right foot, using your hands to help you. And then inhale and come all the way up to center, Take the left knee up to the ceiling and then stretch your left leg long and then pull the right knee out to the side, connecting the right sole of the foot to the left inner thigh. Both sets of fingertips on the floor now to help you start to turn your body so the midline of the trunk is in line with the midline of the left leg. And then continue this as a twist, twisting the belly around to the left and the rib cage, right hand to outer left knee, left hand on the blanket, turning. And then see if you can use that space you made to come forward, grabbing onto the outer left foot with your right hand and let your belly recede and slide over to the left. So the midline of the belly is in line with the midline of the left thigh and start to come forward even more So the belly recedes and slides to the left and lengthens forward. Sides of the waist lengthen forward as well. And let the right butt cheek release back and down. And continue to find more space in your trunk as you fold forward. Pulling the left femur back towards the hip socket grounding the left thigh bone down. And 
And then bend the right knee up to the center and then come out of the pose. Now we'll practice Baddha Konasana with a block between the feet. So have a seat on a folded blanket and prepare for Baddha Konasana, taking the buttock flesh back so that you can sit on the front edge of the sitting bones. And take the block right between the feet and press your feet into the block. Hands behind you on the blanket to help your trunk be very long and upright. Let the shoulders hug the back of the shoulder sockets. Lift the low belly and let the pubic bone descend. Let the abdomen recede back and lengthen. Spread wide across the collarbones and start to stretch the right knee to the right and the left knee to the left. So the inner thighs become very wide. And press the feet into the block as you gather from the outer knees back into the outer hips. So your outer thighs travel towards the hip sockets. So those outer thighs are grounding into the hips and the inner thighs are spreading from the groins to the inner knees. Connect the soles of the feet to the block. And then inhale and lift your knees up to the center. And now we'll practice Baddha Konasana. Feet together, knees wide. Adjust the flesh of the buttocks back so that you can sit on the front half of the sitting bones and then interlace your fingers around the outer feet. And then start to lengthen up through the spine because the groins are descending. So the pubic bone is descending. You're sitting on the front of the sitting bones which makes a lift in the trunk happen naturally. Think of stretching the right knee to the right and the left knee to the left. Gather the outer knees back towards the hips. And then start to fold forward. You can keep your hands clasped or you can place your hands on your shin somewhere. And your elbows can stay close to the hip creases or you can release your hands and forearms forward. So find the way that you would like to forward fold here and continue to gather your outer thighs back towards the hips to help your inner thighs stretch from the groins to the inner knees. So the inner thighs are stretching out to the sides to help ground the knees down, using the musculature of the legs to find that grounding of the knees. Outer feet pressing towards each other, feet opening like a book, groin spreading, outer thighs gathering, abdomen receding and lengthening, and lengthen your trunk further forward. Smooth out your breath here. And then start to roll yourself back up to upright. And lift your knees up to the center. Now we'll practice Tarasana. Sitting down, bring your feet together and knees open. And the feet are quite far from the pelvic floor, so leave a lot of length and space there. Hands behind you on the sticky mat to help you lengthen the spine, shoulders back. And then start to hinge at the hips to fold forward, abdomen receding, rib cage lengthening forward. So the front of the trunk stays long, just as the back of the trunk is long. And then let your spine find a very natural rounded position as your forearms get heavy, as the hands are on the sticky mat. Let your head and tail both release down and let the knees be heavy. Think of the groins reaching back. Smooth and steady breath here. So allow yourself to become quite introverted in this pose. Turning your senses inwards, deep inside yourself to study the inner landscape of your body, the inner landscape of your mind, the inner sensations. 
going deep into your internal world as you relax and release, as you breathe, as you stay present in your body, stay present in this moment. And then start to roll yourself back up, finding an upright spine. Now we'll practice Upavishta Konasana. So sit on the corner of a folded blanket, as you see here, and stretch your legs out to the sides. So don't have your legs too wide. I would say about a 120 degree angle is plenty wide. And take your hands behind you on the blanket and press your fingertips down into the blanket so that you can lengthen the spine up, shoulders back, tops of the thighs are very grounded, and make sure the thighs are not internally rotating or externally rotating, but the fronts of your legs are pointing straight up to the ceiling, feet are pointing straight up to the ceiling, inflection, ground down the tops of your femurs and lift the low belly. Inner and outer knees equally grounded, inner feet extending. Spread the inner legs from the groins to the inner knees to the ankles and gather the outer thighs back into the hips. And then start to take a twist to the right. So the left hand comes in front of your pubic bone onto the floor and the right hand is behind you on the blanket Keeping the legs active, start to turn the belly, turn the low belly, turn the navel, turn the rib cage. Left ribs forward, right ribs back. Get grounded especially in that left femur. Inner left knee grounding. And come back to the center. Pause here. And then twist over to the other side, taking the right fingertips to the sticky mat in front of your pubic bone, left hand behind. Ground the right femur, ground the right inner knee as you turn the low belly to the left, rotate the navel to the left, rotate the ribs. Take the left ribs forward and the right ribs back. Keep your breath open here as you turn, as you twist. And then come back to the center, gather the outer thighs towards the hip sockets. Lengthen the side ribs up towards the armpits and take your shoulders back and down. Inner knees grounding. And then start to fold forward now, taking your hands in front of you and then lower down onto forearms. Elbows walking forward. Let the abdomen recede Let the upper buttocks release down towards the blanket. So the navel recedes back towards the anterior spine and the bottom front ribs still extend forwards to keep the front of the trunk long. Keep the kidney area open and expanding. So don't let those bottom back ribs sink forward but rather gently move the front ribs towards the back ribs and then slide the whole rib cage forward. Buttocks grounding down behind you, thigh bones grounding vigorously. Steady breathing here. And then walk your hands back towards the pelvic floor and then take your hands behind you so that you can sit tall. Staying active in the legs. And then slide your legs together, bending the knees. And now lay down on your back for Ardha Navasana. So release the flesh of your buttocks away from your lower back and then rest in a neutral pelvis, neutral spine, 
Parallel knees bent and feet flat on the sticky mat, arms by your sides. And just take a breath here to lengthen your trunk, to lengthen your spine, and to relax the belly completely. So we'll do a core exercise, and it's important to first relax any habitual contraction in the belly. And this way there's more of a chance that we'll engage in the right places. And then inhale and lengthen your spine, and exhale and Contract the belly by pulling the low, deep belly back towards the spine, excavating the low belly, pulling it in towards the spine, and tuck the pelvis, and then lift the shoulder blades, lift the head, and lift the legs at 45 degrees, stretching the legs, stretching the arms. As you breathe here, every time you exhale, pull the low belly down, scooping it out. And that deep scoop in the deep layers of the abdomen will help you press the lower back down towards the sticky mat as the shoulder blades lift a little higher, as the inner legs extend, as you squeeze the leg towards each other. As you squeeze the legs towards each other. And then inhale and release, taking the feet to the sticky mat, bending the knees and the shoulder blades and head, releasing and relaxing back. Now lay down on your back for a variation of belly rolling. Have a block nearby. And then place the block between your knees, knees over hips. Stretch your arms out to the sides. Long extended arms, shoulder blades sliding down your back. And then as you exhale, take your knees over towards your right elbow and they'll hover there. Knees are squeezing the block and focus on the stretch of the inner arms. Lengthen the collarbones horizontally and slide your shoulder blades down your back and slide your belly to the left. And then inhale your knees to the center and exhale your knees over towards the left elbow. Spread wide through your arms. Press the backs of your hands into the floor. Slide your shoulder blades down your back and slide your belly to the right. Be wide in your collarbones here. Stay active in your arms. Inhale to the center. And exhale your knees over towards the right elbow. Inhale, knees to the center, and exhale, your knees over towards the left elbow. Inhale, the knees to the center, and keep going on your own here. And then bring your feet back down to the floor and rest. Now we'll practice a reverse bridge. So sit down on your buttocks. Have your knees bent and feet flat in front of you. Hands behind you with your fingers pointing towards your buttocks. Feet parallel. And then press into your feet and your hands and lift the buttocks up as you see here. Lifting the right and left sides of the tailbone up. Lift the rib cage up off of your arms. Gather your outer knees in towards each other and lift the buttocks and the tailbone and the shoulder blades so much that you can let your head release back. Grounding the inner feet, gathering the outer knees. And then exhale and release your buttocks down. 
And now turn your hands so that your fingertips point all the way back. Shoulders back, feet are grounded, and then scoop the buttocks and lift the buttocks up again. Gather the outer thighs, lift the center buttocks, lift the outer hips, let the inner thighs release down as you lift the outer hips more and lift the shoulder blades more and let the head release back. Extend through the elbows, press into the feet. And then exhale and sit your buttocks back down. Now we'll practice Setu Bandhasana. So lay down on your back, knees bent, knees parallel and feet flat, neutral pelvis, neutral spine, relaxing any unnecessary contractions in your belly, in your trunk, and walk your feet a little closer to your sitting bones and quite wide, and then ground down through the arms and start to lift the buttocks up. Interlace your fingers and walk your shoulders underneath you even more. And then press the interlaced fingers down into the sticky mat. Press the wrists down, forearms down. Let the outer arms ground down. Lift the heels to lift the buttocks more. Lift the tailbone. Pull the shoulder blades into the rib cage so that the chest moves towards the chin gently. And then ground the heels again and lift the buttocks more. Lift the outer hips and gather your outer knees in. Gather your outer thighs in. Ground the forearms and lift the outer buttocks. Lift the tail. Press into the heels and lift the right and left sides of the tailbone again. And then exhale and roll yourself back down. Now, and now we'll do Setu Bandhasana moving in a flow. So ground the arms as you inhale and come all the way up to Setu Bandha, lifting the buttocks, and then exhale and roll yourself back down, letting the buttocks come down last. Keeping the arms extended by your sides, palms flat. You'll keep the arms here as you inhale and lift the buttocks up and continue to lift the spine up, lift the chest, and exhale, release the spine down, letting the thoracic spine roll down, then the lumbar, and then the buttocks. Inhale to lift the buttocks first, lifting the lumbar, lifting the thoracic, one vertebrae at a time, and exhale, roll the thoracic and lumbar and pelvis and tailbone back down. And continue with this flow, staying grounded in the inner feet, staying gathered in the outer thighs and outer knees, staying grounded in the hands and in the forearms, Let your breath be open. Let the back of the throat be open as you undulate here and say to Bandhasana, going at your own pace. And then the next time you roll down, stay here and take a couple of breaths, resting. Now we'll practice Shavasana. And we'll do what I call a wide Shavasana, with the limbs nice and wide. So set yourself up by taking the flesh of the buttocks away from the lower back. And have your head resting on a blanket here, so there's some softness under the head. And then stretch your arms out wide and stretch your legs out wide, like a starfish. And just enjoy the spaciousness of this Shavasana, letting the limbs be expansive and relaxed at the same time. And deepen your breath here. And let your next exhalation be very slow and gradual and smooth. Relax and release. 